the companions of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, were gathered in the courtyard of the mosque one evening. The weather was mild and the stars were shining overhead. What an unlikely group of people. There were rich and poor, young and old, learned and unlearned, chiefs and notables and slaves. All had been brought together by Islam, the religion of the blessed prophet, who had recently emigrated to Medina. On nights like these, when they felt especially close, one companion would often tell the others how he had come to embrace Islam. This time it was Amr ibn al jamuh turn to speak. Amr was one of the prominent chiefs in Yathrib, now called the city of the Prophet, or simply the city Medina, of the Banu Salama tribe. He was both generous and intelligent, and everyone looked upon him with respect. Tell us, Amr, how it was you came to Islam, said one of the Ansar. Surely it could not have been easy for you to give up your idol worship. It is said that for generations your idol was the most beautiful of any in Medina, made of the finest timber in the land, and that you were very proud of it. For once, Amr bowed his head and seemed a little shy. Slowly he began his story. If you must know the truth, you might say I was tricked by my very own sons, Indeed, it is hard for a father to admit that his sons are wiser than he. Yet in this case, and in this case only, he admonished, frowning at the younger listeners. They were right, and I was wrong. Yes, you're quite right. I took very good care of my idol, the great idol Manath, if you remember. When I think of the money I spent in dressing it in fine silks and anointing it with rare perfumes, I have to shake my head in shame and admit that it was a great waste, although I was not aware of it at the time. As you know, Musab had already been here in Medina for quite a while. His message was well known throughout the city, and many people had been converted. The incredible thing was that without my even knowing it, my own wife and my three sons had joined Islam. Can you imagine? They had kept it a secret from me, knowing, of course, that I would disapprove. There were not many of us left who had not joined Islam, had I but realized it. Nevertheless, I just continued worshipping my idol, Manath. Why should I have changed my ways? Well, from what my wife Hind now tells me, she was very worried that I might die a kafir and go to hell because of my idol worshipping. Of course, I'm no longer young, and that could very easily have happened. She talked with me and pleaded with me, but it was no use. Finally, knowing my great weakness for my son Muaz, she persuaded him to recite the Fatiha to me, which he did. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, all praise to God, Lord of all the worlds, the all compassionate, the all merciful, Master of the day of judgment, Thee alone do we worship, and from Thee alone do we seek help. Guide us on to the straight path the path of those whom you have favored, not of those on whom is indignation brought down, nor of the astray. I had to admit that those verses were indeed very beautiful. In fact, I was quite eager to hear more from the teachings of this new prophet, although I wouldn't have dared admit it at the time. 
When my son saw that I had indeed been impressed, he said, Oh, Father, now that you feel the truth of these verses, how would you like to follow Muhammad's religion, as almost everyone else in Medina has done? Then you could hear so much more than what I have recited to you, and from the blessed prophet himself. Well, I thought about that for a while, but it presented a problem for me. Then I thought of a solution, a very easy solution at that. If my idol Manat agrees, I will join Islam, I announced. I could tell that my son was not at all happy with that answer. I had noticed he had not paid homage to Manath for a long time. I had also heard that almost everyone else in Medina had given up their idols, and this was troubling me. My son confirmed my fears. Manath is nothing but a piece of wood. It can't hear or speak or move. You know perfectly well, Father, that it is the old woman behind it who answers your questions, not the idol. If you ask her, she will not admit it, because then she would be out of a job. I silenced my son with a stern look. Do not blaspheme the religion of your forefathers. I warned him. So saying, I went to my idol. Manat, oh, Manat, I called. I have no doubt, but that you know of this new messenger who has come to us from Mecca. I hear he's a nice enough man and wishes harm to no one, except perhaps to you. For myself, I like very much what he preaches, but I have no wish to abandon you in spite of what he says. What is your advice, O Manath? Advise me that I may decide. Total silence followed my plea. Perhaps I have angered you, Manat, I murmured, and therefore decided to leave the idol in peace until it was better disposed to hear me. Now just imagine what was happening behind my back all this time. My sons had gone to consult with their friend Muaz ibn Jabal, and together they had hatched a plan, which I heard nothing about until very recently. In a moment I will tell you what it was. Now the next morning, when I went back to consult Manat, my idol was nowhere to be seen. How and where could it have disappeared to? No one had ever heard of such a thing as a disappearing idol. I searched inside the house, around the house, everywhere. Alas, Manat is not so small that it can hide behind a cushion, I lamented. Finally, I wandered off so far that I came to the rubbish tip, and there, to my horror, was Manat, all covered with dirt and rubbish. What a terrible shock. I spent the entire day cleaning and polishing it, and after I had anointed it with perfume and dressed it in the finest silks, I replaced it in its niche in my home. The next morning, the very same thing happened. Manath was nowhere to be found. I could not believe that anyone could be so monstrous as to throw it on the rubbish tip a second time, but there, to my great sorrow, I found it, even filthier than before. This time I questioned the whole household, but no one had seen or heard anything. When I asked my son, he replied with an impolite shrug of his shoulders, if Manath is so great a god, why didn't he defend himself? I should have been suspicious at that moment, but I got angry instead and replied, You had better defend your own self for daring to talk like that. And turning to the servants, I shouted, All of you, search for the culprit responsible for this crime and bring him to me immediately. But no one was found. The third night, I remembered what my son had said. It wasn't such a stupid remark. It's my own fault, I mused. I gave Manath no weapon to use against his enemy. Oh, Manath, 
Accept my apology for not thinking to arm you against those villains. And so saying, I slung my sword around Manat's neck. Now you will be able to punish those who transgress against you. That night, I retired, thinking at last to have peace. But the next morning, Manatha disappeared again. Everyone was ordered to search the countryside. Finally, someone found it and called me to the spot. There lay Manatha at the bottom of the town sewer. It was a disgusting sight, I tell you. Someone had tied a dead dog to it, and my beautiful sword was missing. I certainly had no wish to get it out of the sewer and clean it up this time. I shook my head. If you were a god, you would not have allowed this to happen to you. You wouldn't be floating in a sewer, and you wouldn't have lost my sword. So saying, I turned on my heel, sought out my son, and told him of my intention to embrace Islam. How happy I am now that I have left all that idle nonsense behind and have seen the truth the blessed prophet has brought to us. As for my beautiful sword, a few months later I found it hanging beside my bed. Its scabbard had been polished and the blade sharpened. My sons could not keep from smiling when they heard of my discovery. It was then that they told me how for three nights running they had stolen Manath and defiled it. At first I was shocked, but then I realized that they had done all that for my own good. So I forgave them. Old Manat didn't even cry out for help, said my youngest son. So now, brothers, you have learned how it is that I embraced Islam. <laughs>